Uh, here I have one of these Western Digital, that's a 500 gig I think it was, yeah 500 gigabyte green power hard drive. Uh, and this was actually in one of these, or one of those home security, four camera home security systems and it's just left running all the time, recording constantly. And I think it holds up to, you know, a month or so, maybe more of footage that you can go back over. So this has, I think, been installed for, yeah, probably eight to ten years. It was actually made in, did I have a date here, 2011, I think I saw, yeah, 13th of June, 2011. So it's probably, I don't think it was installed that early, but I don't think it's been that long now, but it could be getting on towards ten years or so it's been actually installed and running. Um, but this has actually failed now. They said the hard drive light wasn't coming on and they couldn't access any of their stuff, so I assumed it would either be the power supply or the hard drive. And I took, like, I had a 160 gig drive line around that I was going to chuck out anyway. So I took that long, swapped it over, and that got it going. And this was making a few weird noises and stuff. So I don't know, it sounded a bit like the bearings were possibly on the way out. And, yeah, it was sort of hunting like it was trying to find what it was doing. So I'll put it in this unit. Yeah, making those sort of noises, clicking and carrying on. Although nothing else is that trying to access it, so maybe that's all it's going to do in this unit. I don't know what that switch actually does. But I thought it might be worth having a quick look inside it. Yeah, the actual motor speed sounds like it's varying a bit, but whether that's just this unit doing it or something else I'm not too sure no idea what size they are but it looks something like that one which is a T9 oh, yeah like usual I managed to pick the right one even without having a clue just by looking at the size so I was overlooking here I don't know whether the motors failed or the bearings or the platter or the heads I guess could have worn out or heads and platter could have worn out so I have really no idea. Oops, looks like I had the focus out a bit. So I'm not sure what's worn out inside this thing. It's probably stuck on reasonably well with a seal of some sort. Have I missed one? It'd be like these guys to hide one somewhere. I think that's some sort of vent under there. Oh, there it goes, it's starting to come now. Oops, did not put my screwdriver in the wrong place or I'll do more damage. But it would be interesting to see, I do have one of these, a uh, one gig version of one of these drives that came out of a similar system and that one's intermittent, I think it'll work sometimes and not other times. This does feel like there is something screwed in still in that spot. Or somewhere around that little vent hole thing there. There's definitely a screw under here somewhere, I think. It does look to just be a vent. Or whatever they are, some sort of seal. Do not cover any drive holes. Maybe there is a screw or something under here. Maybe it's just a... Oh, that's probably the vent hole there. This, this is probably a seal for warranty purposes or something. And yeah, there's our screw. I always like doing stuff like that. Not that I bothered to pull mini drives apart. That's the actual heads. Not sure I should be touching that, but oh yeah, that's that doesn't actually feel very good. Although maybe I'm probably damaging the platter doing that potentially. Bearing seems to spin alright. Can't see any damage to the actual platters, but whether I would be able to, I know you can see scratches and stuff on them if they're bad enough. Yeah, I don't know if the bearings in that are a bit out, but I don't really know what one of these feel like. They've got quite a powerful pair of magnets there. I guess I could plug it in and see what it actually does if we can see what. Bit hard to see the actual heads here, unfortunately, but I might. 
get them to come out a bit. Yeah, the heads are hunting around a bit. That's about all it does. It actually sounds better with the cover off it for some reason. Not sure how many RPMs that thing runs at, but it's definitely not the spin bearings in it. I found they used to tell you sometimes what RPM. So no idea what's actually wrong with it. Could it be a failure in the electronics as well, I guess. Given the amount of time it's been running. actually see what it does I probably should have done that first but I'm not gonna bother using it even if it was a good drive because it's had a hell of a lot of hours on it so I'm gonna have a look at that see what it does what the laptop says about it okay I've got the laptop now when I plug it into that it just seems to hunt for a lot longer doing the same things I'm probably making a few more loud noises I guess eventually the computer's probably going to give up trying to read it. Huh, made a liar of me. Oh no, it's gone again. It's like Windows finding the USB and losing it again or something. It sounds like it's connecting and disconnecting, but... sound of it so it's giving a good go trying to get some data off it and nothing's happening so not sure what's actually wrong with that but something's definitely dead in it I thought it'd be interesting just to have a look but it doesn't really tell me much about what's going on yeah those bearings seem to be all right but that could be something to do with the heads aren't picking up signal. I'm not sure what those heads should look like, but oh yeah, they're just like I've got a little metal pin thing sticking out there, I think, and a couple of little thing that's just uh, sit it on this plastic bit, I think. And then there's a couple of heads underneath. Oh, how on earth are they connected? There must be some very fine wires there somewhere. 
Guess I could pull it the bits a bit further and see what happens. Okay, so maybe I'll pull this thing to bits. I'll get that drive thing out of the way. Looks like we've got a couple more screws holding the magnets in. I don't know that these heads come off. I wonder if I can actually measure these heads. Well, they've actually got a heap of wires connecting to them. Or a heap of PCB tracks. I would have thought they'd just be... I mean, they're basically just a little wire winding normally. Much like a cassette head or a video head or something. I don't know what all the extra wires are for. There's some sort of, oh, there's actually uh, like a chip or something. Something shiny on the the head connection. I can see that it looks like there's sort of a few contacts. Oh no, the heads actually do have here. Yeah, they have multiple connections. I don't need a magnifying glass to see how many there are, but there's at least eight or so. I can use this old lens. Oh yeah, that's a bit better. More, I said eight wires. Two, four, at least six. Two, four, yeah, I think it's six wires per upper and lower head. Then they all come across. I can see the tracks on the board into what I assume some sort of chip with a couple of capacitors or resistors next to it. So, yeah, not just a simple job to work out if maybe one of the heads is shot. Could be that chip that's picking up the signals failed, I guess. I guess one thing I could do is I assume we can disconnect this. I assume that's a connector. I guess we could disconnect the heads and see if it makes any difference whatsoever with no heads connected. Oops, there goes the heads moving around the joint. Now I know I dropped a screw in there. Come on, so they're probably all stainless steel. Now, why on earth did the head scatter there? Is there some sort of voltage still in here? Or did I just flick them by accident or something? There's no actual, with that screw out, there's nothing actually holding the heads down, really. They're just pivoting, I guess these guides and stuff do. Let's see what happens if I power that up with no head connector, just out of interest. It's kind of pushing itself back in there, unfortunately, but... Hmm, nothing, so maybe... Oh, of course, that would be the coils, I guess, that actually... Uh, maybe that's what all the connections are for, is it? Oh, yeah, because there's some coils on the back here. Of course, they're going to be... They're all on this pivoting thing, so I've got no power to make the heads move at all now. Oh, well. So much for that theory. If I knew which connections are which, I could just disconnect the signal side, I guess. But, of course, that's going to actually do the electromagnet side... Looks like I've damaged that platter a bit now, or it was damaged. I wonder if these are probably glass platters, I guess. Pretty sure all these ones are now... Yeah, hard to tell, but it sounds a bit like it could be. There are a couple of nice rare earth type magnets in here, I think. At least very strong ones. Whether they're actually rare earth or not is another thing, I guess, but... Mainly just the magnetism holding it in there. Oh, that's just a piece of steel, I think. Yeah, that's nothing. That's the magnet there, that sort of horseshoe phew, thing there. I could need to pick the drive up <laughs> with that. I think there's one more screw in it. May well loosen all this off, but I don't think you can get it out without pulling all the platters out at the same time from memory. Off this part's actually loose now, but it's yeah, very close. There's some sort of rubberized little thing there. 
that looks rather it's all gone white and horrible which is not the best way to keep your hard drive free of muck I guess so that could be a failure point that that rubber has been dropping particles in here that bit still seems to be stuck down rather well so there's possibly another screw no there's not another screw I don't think no, it's moving oh, I think that is loose it's just that bearing probably now does that stop the head what stops this there must be a stop here somewhere it's not that little thing is it so is it maybe this thing I guess if we can swing the heads back further we can how do I get that out without wrecking the heads is the next problem I guess that sort of goes tilts the one way does that allow the heads to go any further doesn't seem to I don't think I can really get that slide oh it goes upwards you can just get it off just catching the heads a little bit but hopefully not damaging now there's a it's got to be a stop here somewhere something stops those heads coming right back but I assume when they assemble this at the factory they've got a way of doing it well, I doubt they put the platters and head in at the same time I'm sure it'll be obvious once you pull it the bits what the hell's stopping it, but not while you've got it together. There's nothing down in there, I don't think. Is there a pin down there somewhere? No, because it would hit on that. So it's not that little slot under there. Oh, I'm blind. It's this thing right here. <laughs> it's just a little bit... Ah, there we go. Ah, bingo, that simple. <laughs> Didn't even notice that thing there. Whoops. Plug's gone back in, so that's the head assembly. Got a coil of wire there. Looks like it's just aluminium. Could be copper with a weird colour, I guess. And that's the two heads pushing on each other there. And yeah, a little shiny chip thing in there. And that's the other half of the magnet. The actual bit with the magnet. Is that going to come out or not? It seems reluctant. Just got to pull it up the right way so that's a nice strong magnet there i think if you bend this bit of metal you can actually pop that off or maybe if you pry something under it and then i guess it's just the platters different size screwdriver of course Obviously you shouldn't put your fingers on these, but once you've opened it up to the dust and stuff, it's probably not much good anyway. I think someone did say they had a machine where you could actually take these platters out of any drive, even if the motor didn't run or anything, and actually read them and recover data that way. So I believe it is sometimes there were ways of recovering the data off platters from completely damaged drives. Yeah, I don't know if that is glass or not, or whether it will shatter if I chip it, but... Yeah, I think that's actually metal. Yeah, it's just aluminium, I think, so it's not a glass platter. So all we've got left really is the motor and the circuit board. Motor's sort of glued in there by the look of it. I assume that would have some strong magnets or something in there, or... Maybe it's just a typical brushless motor with wire, probably a bunch of wire coils there somewhere. But even those motors should have another magnet somewhere. And the circuit board, which is probably just a few surface mount things these days. Looks like there's possibly some sort of chip there or something for motor driving or the like. Must have some sort of servo chips for the heads and the... Yeah, it's just a piece of foam there. And that comes off. Yeah, just a few... Looks like mine be a memory chip. Samsung. Smooth. And something with a big M on it. 
Foxconn connector. But yeah, otherwise not really much good for anything but e-waste. This was done on the 30th of the 4th, 2011 by the look of it. But that's, you know, that can go in the irony alley. Scrap metal, same with this cover, that's probably almost clean aluminium if you took the the bits off, so this can be recycled, this I think the filter or whatever. Yeah, it's got a hole, goes down a little path. Maybe that's a little charcoal filter thing or something. Another bit of foam, so that can be does have a bit of a silicon seal, so even that's probably fairly dirty aluminium. I assume it is it'd have to be aluminium because none of this would be magnetic. No, no, it is magnetic. Yeah. God, they don't even put an aluminium cover on them anymore, so it's looks like aluminium or even stainless, but if it's stainless, it's very low grade, so that's only good for steel recycling. There's definitely a metal pin in the middle of that. I'd say there's a magnet in there somewhere. Does it repel it though? Or maybe there's just steel in there. It doesn't seem to make it rotate like you would think if there was a magnet in there. And because there's a few stainless steel pins and stuff, you can't really sell it as clean aluminium. But at least that can be recycled. I think the platter's aluminium, so that could actually go as clean aluminium. That little thing can go back in there. Might as well screw those bits back together, I guess. Oops. Try and keep it all together. Since it's not worthwhile, I guess technically that ring is probably clean aluminium. You could get a few cents for that, but I don't think I care about that. So I might as well just hold all those bits together. Could even put the steel lid back on it, I guess. And that way it can all get recycled as irony aluminium. And yeah, other than that, a bunch of torque screws and other useless stuff. Circuit board can go in the e-waste. Whether those pins on it would be gold plated or not, I don't know. These days people think they are, but I get a feeling they use a different gold coloured metal. But it's not actually gold or very low content of actual gold in it now so I hope people aren't collecting a whole lot of connectors for no reason but uh, I forget what they called it but there is some there we go some new metal I think they use on a lot of modern connectors it's just got technically eight gold pins there and they could be gold coated these little chips would probably have something in them even these little bits here, which, what do they press onto? Oh, they're, yeah, the contacts for this motor, so that's got a few little potentially gold-coated things. If you really wanted to, you could probably peel that bit of flexi connector off there. Flexible circuit board stuff, but yeah, it's just glued on by the look of it. But not really worth a hassle. And those magnets I tend to like keeping. Good if you want to magnetise your screwdriver up. I don't know if any of these screws are magnetic, probably not. But yeah, I can feel that sucking on there, so... Probably a good way of magnetising these, but these screws are normally stainless, so... Yeah, it pulls that little screwdriver up now. Does that one have any magnetism? Nothing to speak of. Yeah, and there you go. Now picks up a screwdriver, so that's a good way to magnetise your screwdrivers, just rub them back and forth across one of these. Easy to just stick on a metal surface somewhere. I'll stick it on the cabinet over there. And yeah, that can be recycled. That circuit board could probably go in the e-waste. I mean, I should have put the head back in because that's all aluminium as well. That could go in the irony alley bin. Don't think there's any gold connectors on there, a bit of copper in there. Could be recovered, I guess. Could be, yeah, it looks like goldish coloured pins there. And that little chip might have a tiny bit. And there's a bearing in the middle there. I don't know how they press that in, but not much good for anything. And yeah, the rest of this hardware can just go in the rubbish, I think. Nothing there really worth doing anything with. Unless you had a use for those screws. I mean, they're nice stainless screws, but they're so tiny, they're not much good for anything. 
but anyway that's that's what's inside one of these hard drives not exactly sure what's failed in it whether it's something to do with the heads themselves or the signal coming off them somewhere I assume it's something like that or maybe the, you know they've worn right through or the platters are worn or something and they can't get a signal off given they would have you know traveled I think there's a way of working out how, much, how far they've traveled if I knew the RPM but these would have done a lot of miles over the years since it's basically been running for around probably I'd say around 10 years 8 to 10 years probably non-stop that whole time except for the odd turning off when the power went off or to do something with the system and had a couple of things changed on it so yeah those it's quite likely the heads themselves have worn somewhat oops something's falling off there now that I've touched it but yeah very fragile little things and I guess with time they probably wear out but anyway thanks for watching